What's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today we have the CampSafe 12 gauge perimeter alarm from Fifth Ops. That's F-I-T-H-O-P-S. I did a video on one of these a while back and they saw it. So they reached out and sent me the new Gen 4 model for today's video. They actually sent me a goodie box here with a bunch of cool stuff in it. We've got the 12 gauge adapter kit so you can use different types of ammo with this thing. The 12 gauge perimeter trip slash rescue alarm. I did open this one up. It obviously did not come like that. Then we've got some trip line so you can actually rig this thing up. Some waterproof blanks, 126 decibels. Flares, which you guys know we like to use quite a bit on this channel. They also sent some pepper gel. It's called tweaker spray and some red 22 blanks. I've been looking for these for years and we finally got some. As far as I know, these are the most powerful 22 blanks you can get. So all this stuff is available on their website. So before we get started, they wanted me to let y'all know, well, number one, they've set up a 20% off discount just for you guys specifically. Usually they do 15% off. For y'all, they did 20 and I'm not making anything off of it. So if you want a new Gen 4 or even one of their older models, definitely click that link and you'll save quite a bit of money. And if YouTube is watching, this is not a firearm in any way. It is simply an alarm system. They also want you guys to beware of knockoffs. Apparently, ever since they released these things, there have been a number of knockoffs flooding the market and they're not the original or up to the same quality standard. So if you get a perimeter alarm, just make sure it is Fifth Ops brand. This is the only one I've ever used and it's the only one I would recommend. But today we are gonna use this device to test how dangerous is a hang fire. If you don't know what a hang fire is, it's basically when you pull the trigger on a live round and there's a slight delay before the powder actually ignites. And this can obviously be problematic if you think it's a dud and you point the gun in an unsafe direction or you eject the round and it goes off outside of the firearm. They're not extremely common. I had a couple hang fires when I did the underwater ammo video and it did spawn this idea. So while they're not super common, they do happen, and today I wanna see how dangerous a hang fire could actually be. All right, we've got our little contraption set up here on the table. It's very easy to use. You just pull this plunger back and insert the pin into the hole. We're gonna use a high visibility string so you guys can see it a little better, and I am gonna start with the older version, just in case we destroy it. I don't wanna ruin the brand new one if I don't have to. And obviously this test is gonna be on the human hand. We have a couple different versions from Ballistic Dummy Lab here. The first one, is a closed fist, pretty self-explanatory. And the second one is an open hand that actually has joints and movable fingers. It is pretty cool. So I'm gonna save the fist for the final test of the video. We'll go ahead and start with this little guy. Okay, before we start the test, really quick, I wanna try one of these blanks that they sent us and just see what this thing sounds like when it's used as intended. It says these are 126 decibels. I have no idea what that actually sounds like, but. We're gonna find out. Go ahead and slide the rim of the shell casing into that little groove and we're ready to go. Okay, we're going no ear pro for this one. I wanna hear what it actually sounds like. I might regret that, but let's do it. That was pretty loud and very bright. <laughs> And there's our spent 12 gauge blank. Surprisingly no damage. I thought maybe since it wasn't in the chamber of a firearm, the plastic might crack, but it survived. So it obviously wasn't as loud as a gun, but I think you could probably hear that from a few hundred yards away, at least. Pretty cool. All right, let's get this party started. Now we could start small and work our way up, but let's be honest, no one wants to see 22s and 380s. So we're just gonna get right to it with a 12 gauge shotgun shell. This is a cardboard shell, so I assume it's far more likely to burst. It's also about 1,000 years old. So hopefully it even works. Insert the shotgun shell, and I'll just go ahead and set our human hand on it, just like that. That's probably worst case scenario. Now, obviously this video premise is hang fire, so you ejected a cartridge that didn't fire, reach down to pick it up, and it goes off in your hand. But really, it could apply to a live round going off in your hand for whatever reason. Maybe something hits the primer while you're holding on to it, or you're Satan and the heat from your body just cooks off the round in your hand. 
unlikely, but accidents do happen. Now, for safety reasons, I should probably be taking cover behind something, but I've got to see the action. So we're going to wear the new Fortis helmet from Premier Body Armor for a little extra layer of security. Video coming soon, by the way. All right, 12-gauge shotgun shell versus human hand. Let's see what happens. It did not go off. We got a hang fire on the hang fire video. <laughs> now I gotta wait a few seconds before I go up there and look at it. Okay, there's our cardboard shotgun shell. I don't know if you can see it, but the primer strike does look a little white. So I went ahead and replaced it with a regular 12 gauge double op buckshot. This one should work. I also got a little bit further behind it. These are not small projectiles, so I don't wanna be directly to the side. Let's do it. <laughs> that looked painful. Let's go check it out. Now, for those of you that don't know, when a cartridge is not in a chamber, it has substantially less pressure. It's also not directional because there's nothing around it to contain that blast. So the projectiles do not shoot forward like they would in a firearm. And that's why I'm curious about this test. So let's take a look at the damage. We actually have one of our double up buckshot pellets laying right there on the table. And that kind of proves the difference right there. If we would have shot this with a 12 gauge shotgun, there would not be pellets on the table. I can pretty much guarantee that. So there is our 12 gauge shell. It's definitely busted open. And that is our ballistic dummy hand. We definitely have some burns, but I do not see too much damage. It doesn't look like the ballistics gel is even torn. So it's definitely hot. It would not feel good but it looks like this guy's hand would be okay. And there's our 12 gauge shell. You can see what happens to it when it's not in a shotgun. It basically just explodes out the sides and it looks like the wad didn't even make it <laughs> out of that shotgun shell. So it just blew out the sides. We got a couple little burns and that's about it. So it'd probably scare you half to death, but aside from some small little burns, it looks like your hand would probably be okay. And next up we have this. So this is a little adapter that they also sell with these perimeter alarms. And as you can see, it perfectly fits a 308. Now the 308 is much higher pressure than a 12 gauge shotgun shell, but it's also a metal shell casing. So it might be less likely to explode and cause damage. And for this one, I'm going to set the hand on there just like that. So it is touching where the neck of the shell casing meets the bullet, which I would assume is probably the weakest failure point. And there's also some ballistic shell in front of the bullet. So no matter which way the blast is directed, we should have all our bases covered. Here we go, 308 versus human hand. I really don't know what to expect with this one. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a ton of damage, but let's find out. Three, two, one. <laughs> That sounded way louder than the 12 gauge shotgun shell. Okay, just looking at the slow-mo, that one looked far more damaging than the 12 gauge shotgun shell did. And the bullet actually did fire with a little bit of authority. It probably didn't make it 30 feet, but that was intense. Let's take a look at the damage. So there's our 308 shell. You can see it basically just blew in half. And then looking at the hand, that pinky <laughs> definitely looks a little bit crooked. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Oh yeah. Let me put this in the sun so you guys can see it. So there's a massive burn mark right there in the palm. Also a pretty deep hole in that ballistics gel. And it looks like we also have a hole in the index finger and right below the pinky, right there. So that might be where the bullet went through because that is about where it was at. And the rest of it is just 
from the shell casing exploding. That would do some serious damage to your hand, probably permanent lifelong scars. I don't think we have any broken bones. That pinky is definitely a little crooked, but it looks like the bone is still intact, but the flesh is not. We have two or three holes at least, severe burns, and that would require a hospital visit for sure. And last but certainly not least, we've got to try the 50 BMG. Now the rim on a 50 cal is not quite as big as a 12 gauge shotgun shell, so it doesn't fit in that groove as tightly as I would like. So I wrapped some tape around it. We're gonna see if this will give us a solid fit and hopefully we can get this thing to go off. For this one, I am gonna use the fist and I was thinking we could try to stick this cartridge right through that hole. So it would be just like somebody picked it up and was hanging onto it like that. It looks like it'll fit. And just like that, we got it. I think that looks about perfect. All right, I've got our ballistic dummy fist holding the 50 cal. Some of the gel is starting to tear because it's a lot of pressure, but I've got it locked into our perimeter alarm. And then I also have the open hand right there in front of the bullet. So two different scenarios going on at the same time. All right, I've got you guys back here with me and I have two cameras out there. I think you can actually see the table right there. So if anything crazy happens, maybe this camera will pick it up. And I actually have a military buddy who saw a hang fire incident with a 50 BMG. It was an M2 machine gun. The guy ejected a bad round and a couple seconds later, it went off in his lap. So if he would have picked it up, how bad would it have been? Let's find out. <laughs> By far the loudest round that we've shot all day. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice the hand is laying on the ground like 10 feet in front of me. It got yeeted off of that table. Well, this is extremely unfortunate. I have my high speed camera right here and for whatever reason, the record button did not work. So that is about to piss me off, but we did get it on this one and hopefully you guys could see it. So here is our perimeter alarm and it literally ripped the two by four out of the table. So the threading on those screws was not enough to contain that blast. And we even have some ballistics gel underneath it right there. So our open hand is laying on the ground right here. And it definitely has a pretty good hole right there in the middle of the palm. Other than that, it actually looks okay. The fist, on the other hand, I don't think is gonna be the same. So I was sitting right there on the side of the railroad ties and that is where our fist ended up and Oh my goodness. <laughs> it just completely blew those fingers off. It looks like we have some finger bones laying on the ground. That is definitely one right there. Looks like a little chicken bone. And then I saw some more over here. So this is laying on the ground about five feet away from our table. Looks like a finger and some of the ballistic gel. And we also have another finger right there. That is even more damage than I expected. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it would be bad, but I mean, that is just ridiculous. There's nothing left on that ballistic dummy hand, including the bones. And that's the part that I would consider realistic. Those bones are very real. And as you can see, it just, annihilated every one of them. <laughs> All right, guys, there you have it. Live ammo can absolutely be dangerous if it goes off in your hand. Obviously, the bigger the caliber, the worse it is. And the 50 cal definitely caused the most damage. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Again, I wanna thank Fifth Ops for sending this out and letting us try it. If you want something like this, I definitely recommend that you go check them out. As always, guys, if you did like the video, please hit the like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.